representing his native Ukraine, now training out of Southern California. He became a world champion when he finished off Adonis Stevenson in the 11th round by way of knockout. He's the former WWE Light Heavyweight Champion of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alexander the Neo Vodzig. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, for me, it's a big honor, and uh, I'm really excited to, excited to fight on such a big card. Pay-per-view, Las Vegas. I see all the banners. I see my face all around Las Vegas. It makes me very excited. I want to say thank you for, for uh, PBC, Adrian Renoso, my manager, to make this fight happen. This is a great opportunity to fight such guy like David Benavides. He's a top fighter, as was mentioned before. Uh, youngest uh, uh, middleweight uh, world champion. Uh, he's a representative. He's representing boxing, actually. So fighting the guys, the caliber like him, it's a big honor, and I'm very excited. And we're going to show a great fight. Thank you. Alexander Vodzik, ladies and gentlemen. And now let's bring up the second half of our co-main event. What a 2023 for this man. Incidentally, last March, he headlined at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, defeated Caleb Plant in what was an exhilarating matchup, and then he would follow it up in November at Mandalay Bay Michelob Ultra Arena, and he did something to Demetrius Andrade, which no one has been able to do. One, hand him a defeat, and also finish him off in the seventh round, or the sixth round, I stand corrected, and really turned up the intensity and finished off Demetrius Andrade, a United States Olympian. This man knows what it's like to step inside the ring and put on a show I literally mean this. He is must-see television with every single time that he steps inside the ropes. You want to take a look at highlights from this man? Look up David Benavides' knockout over Rogelio Porky Medina. He's literally, it's like playing a video game, watching him compete. Ladies and gentlemen, 28 wins, 24 of those coming by way of knockout. No losses. The WBC super middleweight champion of the world from Phoenix, Arizona, David Benavides. You know, first of all, I just want to thank God for this opportunity, and I just want to thank everybody else. Sam Samluku, it's my father, Jose Benavides, Al Heyman, Luis de Cubas, um, David Garcia. You know, um, if it wasn't for my team, I wouldn't be here where I am right now, but now that we're here, this is, gonna, this is a, a big card. I'm very excited for this. Um, we've um, got the co-main event, and, you know, Alexander Buznik is a great fighter. You know, I'm prepared for him. We actually sparred when I was 21 years old. And now I'm very happy that we can bring this fight to the, to the people. It's definitely going to be a great fight, but I'm looking for, to steal the show. We got two more days till the Monstro comes out, so I'm very excited. See you guys Saturday. David Benavides. Now, David, campaigning here, 175. Welcome to the light heavyweight division. How does it feel preparing for 175? Um, I feel amazing. This has been the easiest weight cut of my life. Now I know how it feels when people say, oh, I had an easy weight cut, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that being said, my speed is going to be even better. My strength is going to be better, better, and my endurance is going to be overall better. Um, I did not leave any stone unturned for this training camp. I know, like I said, Alexander, he's a, he's a great fighter. And um, I know him really well. I put together a great game plan. And uh, this Saturday, going to still the show. You know, I know we got some tough competition because competition Gervonta and Frank Martin, they're going to be trying to put the best show they can. But, you know, this is going to be the David Benavides night. Now, Alexander, how much are you looking to... I'm sure you're not wanting to welcome David Benavides to the light heavyweight division with open arms. You want to provide him an unfriendly welcome, but you have been at this weight class for years. In your opinion, is there that much of a massive difference from super middleweight to light heavyweight? Uh, I don't really think so because David, he's a, he's a big fighter and he was just a huge super middleweight. I think right now with a even size, I don't see any advantage on my side regarding the size. So basically, I think uh, he's supposed to feel uh, very comfortable in uh, this weight division. So where do you feel that you have the edge in the fight? 
Uh, well, well, I'll try to use what I do best. I, I use my footwork, I, you know, do, do, do consistent, try to time him, you know, uh, do, do, just do, do my job. David, for you, you know, was coming up here to 175 a reason um, because of an opportunity or the fact that, you know, the guy that you want at 168, uh, you know, that fight hasn't happened yet. But what are your thoughts? Is this going to be a lengthy stay here in the light heavyweight division? Are you going to go back and forth? No. So, I mean, I didn't feel like there was any more any reason to stay at 168 any longer. Um, my main goal was to win all the belts at 168. Canelo's holding up all the belts hostage. And, you know, um, like I said, it's a perfect time. I've been at 168 for the past 10 years. So my, naturally, my body's getting bigger. And um, I think this is just a perfect time to come up. And I'm just looking to capture all the titles in this weight class and giving the, guy, uh, giving the fans the best possible fights I could possibly give you guys. You made your pro debut in August of 2013. Uh, is it unbelievable to think about how quickly time goes and the fact that you are still, you know, in your 20s? You're a young veteran. Yeah, man. It's just been, it's been a lot of patience. And I've been putting in, I put in all the groundwork. Um, last year was barely my first pay-per-view, and I had been professional for 10 years already. So the best thing, you have to have patience with the best things in, in the sport. So, um... I feel like I got another 15 years left in me for this professional game, so I'm very excited to make this second half of my career the best half. Now, Alexander, for, for you, when it comes to, you know, assessing David Benavidez, he proclaims that this very well could be the fight of the night. Uh, when he says something like that, uh, what goes through your mind? Well, I'm supposed to be part of it. Ab absolutely, but does that excite you, knowing that, you know, he's going to be at his absolute best? Oh, 100%. I don't really expect that any, any, any discounts from him. I know that I'm supposed to face his best shape. Now he uh, didn't have any problems with the weight cut, so I, I'm gonna, supposed to face the best version of David Benavides. What kind of statement are you looking to make against David Benavides on Saturday night? Well, I'm just going to resist the monster. Oh, wow. David, how do you respond to that? You know, I, I prepare very well for Alexander Bosnick, too. I know he's in the best shape of his life, and we got two Warriors uh, going up against each other. Um, we had a hell of a sparring session, three sparring sessions to be exact, and we're in Oxnard, so and I'm very excited to bring, be able to bring this to the people, and we're definitely going to steal the show Saturday. David, what happened in those sparring sessions? You guys got to pay the pay-per-view to see. Okay, all right. Looking forward to this one between David Benavides and Alexander Wojcik. David, what kind of message are you hoping to send to the light heavyweight division, also the super middleweights? I'm just going to be as dominant as, was, as I was in the, in the super middleweight division. And um, like I said, I'm staying here. I'm not going nowhere. I'm looking to campaign here and take all the belts. Now, if you had your choice when it comes to assuming everything goes according to plan, you get your hand raised, uh, have you thought about what could be next? Or is it like, hey, let me take on the best light heavyweight? Or, again, is the, uh, the end game uh, the man that is known as Canelo? You know, I really don't care about Canelo. I, my, if he didn't want to get the fight at 168, we're at 175 now. Now we're looking to face the best here. Do you like the fact that being up here seven pounds, you're going to be dealing with guys that are bigger? I mean, you walk around and you're a very big, you know, strong guy. I mean, guys that are a little bit bigger. The, better, nice the better the competition gets for me, the better and the, the better I get myself. So that's why I've never shied away from no hard fights because I know since I was a little kid, I've been working with world champions since I was 14 years old and the best has always came out, came out of me. So when the bright lights get turned on, I always show up. When you hear, you know, celebrities, guys like Mike Tyson and, and you know, top-level athletes all over the world, entertainers, and when they talk about fighters that they love, you seem to be one of those that they always say, I love watching David Benavidez fight. The fans love watching you fight. The fan support just continues to increase. Do you feel that? What does that mean to you? It, it's always been my dream since a little kid to be that fighter. I feel like I don't have... You know, I, I didn't have the titles at 168, but I do feel like a champion in my heart. And um, day in, day out, I'm going to be giving my all 100% to all the single fans because the fans pay good money to watch these fights. And I'm going to be putting my heart on the line every single night, and you guys will get the best out of David Benavides every single time. Alexander, how does the fight end on a Saturday night against David Benavides? Uh, I'm going to win this fight because I'm in best shape in my life. And, you know, I'll do everything to win this fight. 
Do you feel then, you, you talk about how in shape you are, that your conditioning is going to be a significant factor in the fight? Well, this is basically what everyone's supposed to have fighting David because he's, uh, he's the fighter who makes uh, constant pressure. You cannot just fight him, st stand in front of him with no condition because you have to move. And in order to move, you have to have conditions. And I guess I do have it. So utilizing your ring IQ and, and your experience is going to serve you well on Saturday is what you're saying? I hope it will. All right, Alexander Wojcik, ladies and gentlemen. David Benavides on a Saturday night. You are super middleweight champion of the world now in your first jump here to 175 against Alexander Wojcik. Your prediction? You know, I'm going to just be David Benavides. The monster is coming out and I go for the knockout every single time. And this fight's not going to be no different. I'm going to steal the show and I'm, going, I'm looking to knock Alexander out. And the rest of 2024 is going to look how for David Benavides? Um, you know, we're going to keep having impressive performances and keep beating the best in the division. And um, that's just what I want to keep doing. I just want to keep being that fighter that, you know, that every time I fight, it's going to be a carne asada. It's going to be a party back at home. And, you know, we're going to give you guys the best fights possible. Yeah, I like that. Some carne asada watching David Benavides go at it against Alexander Wojcik. Ladies and gentlemen, our co-main event combats this one for the interim WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. A round of applause for David Benavides and Alexander Wojcik.